Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back with another video, and today I am going to be bringing you guys a toy review for something that I've had uh, sitting on the side for a little while, but was gifted to me by one of my subscribers. Uh, and I had it sitting in the box for a couple of months, and I finally decided to open it, and that is... Combiner Wars Devastator, and if you don't already know, Combiner Wars Devastator was reissued sometime around December or January, and uh, you were able to pre-order it. I think, I'm not sure if it's still available on uh, Hasbro's, uh, you know, ha Hasbro Pulse, but looking at the packaging, it says that Devastator is this big, this is supposed to be true to size, and we're going to take a look and see if he is worth it, if he needs any upgrades, or uh, if the toy is worth getting in your collection. Because, you know, having a full-size Devastator is something that uh, a lot of people have been wanting for a long time, even though this is a six-year-old toy. But without further ado, let's uh, sit back, relax, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and let's transform and roll out. <laughs> Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, becoming a channel member, or purchasing some merch on my Teespring store today. Okay, so as you can see out of the package, here are all six Constructicons, and boy are they massive. They are ginormous Transformers. It's kind of hard to, to actually picture how big they are just by looking at all six of them in vehicle mode, but I'm going to try and go over each of them and the ups and downs about their vehicle mode, their robot mode, and then I'm going to actually combine them, but I'm going to do that in a separate video on purpose because, well, you know, it's going to take quite a bit just to actually get into the ups and the downs about the vehicles. Taking a look at Scavenger up close and personal, he, you know, looks pretty all right. He's probably the best one of the best of the different vehicles, you know, that big excavator with the shovel doesn't have the any articulation here, but it does go up and down. It can go left and right, which is rather cool. And it is a great looking version of Scavenger, especially when you compare him next to G1 Scavenger. You can see how tiny <laughs> these little Constructicons were uh, back in the day. And you can see how much of a big size improvement it is as far as a vehicle. Of course, this one has a little bit more movement because it can turn. And that is kind of part of the transformation in addition to his posability as Devastator. And this one can uh, do the same thing. Doesn't, you know, obviously the shovel itself doesn't turn very much the same as the new one. Taking a look at Scrapper here. You can see it's a pretty awesome looking vehicle, except for this tiny little canopy, which does turn. I think that is part of the transformation, but the shovel is nice and big. And I do like the size of the vehicle, especially when you compare it to at G1 Scrapper. Uh, I actually like this vehicle a little bit better. I do wish that it had a little bit better of a canopy on this. Maybe a little bit bigger would have been nice, but I do like the size of this shovel, and that is one of the good things. As far as a vehicle mode is, Scrapper is really good. Then taking a look at Long Haul, boy, boy oh boy, this is one hefty vehicle. Uh, it is just a massive chunk of a dump truck, especially when you compare it to his G1 counterpart. Like the G1 counterpart is like tiny, tiny, tiny. But the one drawback to this thing, there is like a big gap there, you know, in the uh, in the back end there. And this dump truck part portion itself does not in any way, shape or form like fold back. So you can't do this, which I mean, I know it's kind of with the wheels, but you can't like pretend that like long haul is dumping anything. So it is a little bit of a drawback, but it kind of comes with the fact that he can hold all of the Constructicon's weapons that he comes with all on vehicle mode. And just to show you what that looks like, there he is with everything on top of him. I, I put the uh, the blaster here and I put the wings on, so this way the Devastator's chest plate. I got the blaster in two pieces, and then of course I've got 
the missile launcher-esque things that you can add there and make long haul basically quite literally carrying everything. Then bringing out Mixmaster. Now this is the one that I know a lot of people have their ups and downs about, especially the type of vehicle that they chose. Instead of choosing a cement mixer that uses the front end of the truck over here and has the cement mixer itself in the back, they instead made it where the front of the vehicle is here and this is where the cement would come out. And I'll be quite honest with you, I think it was a poor choice as far as Mixmaster is concerned because it kind of hurts him when he goes into Devastator mode. And you can kind of see what they did. They painted the back vents for the motor for the actual cement mixer so that when it does go into Devastator mode, and you'll see what I'm talking about, it just doesn't look right to me. Personally, I, I, I know I've seen the third-party kits, and this is one of the things that I know that a lot of people have, is that they, they add on the piece to try and make this like a front mixer. But it is, it is something that is missing out of it. And oh, just to take note of, of course, the Constructicons don't have painted hubcaps. That was a thing back in 2015, all the way through Power of the Primes. And it kind of is something today, is that they don't paint the blasted hubcaps so it is something that you do have to deal with. Now, I will say the biggest disappointment to me for this mode is the fact that the cement mixer is static. It doesn't move. Because when you compare him to his G1 counterpart, here is the G1 Mix Master, and this part does move. I have seen some people say that, I don't know necessarily if this is true, but some Mix Master toys had a purple... Uh, cement mixer but this does turn as you can see and you know of course this is where everything came out but that is just something to take note of with this particular version of Mixmaster. And probably the second best vehicle mode out of them all I, I think Scavenger and and, and then Bone Crusher and then Sca Scrapper would be my top three. But I really like Bone Crusher's Bulldozer mode. Like, it's just a nice little heft to a bulldozer. It's a lot bigger and beefier than the original Bone Crusher was. And I do like this shovel quite a bit. Especially when you compare him to his G1 Bone Crusher, which, again, little tiny bu uh, bulldozer. This uh, part is uh, old and it's broken here, so it doesn't quite stay up very well. Probably gonna have to glue that, but that's just something that I have to deal with. And uh, yeah, I do like this new bulldozer quite a bit as well. Hook is my second biggest disappointment. I, I think that as far as like all the different vehicle modes, this one suffers a bit because of the type of vehicle that he is, especially when you take a look at the fact that he has a hook here, which doesn't extend in any way. It's just a static crane. And the back portion here where the canopy is, this whole section here is supposed to turn as far as the vehicle mode is concerned. Because when you look at the original hook, you know, the original hook here uh, actually had a crane. The boom itself did extend and the hook moved. So when you compare it, and also this portion here turned left and right, so you can pick something up and put it back down. You can't quite do this with this truck. And I wonder if it was just more for the appearances and when they designed this particular whole Devastator set, they were not thinking the vehicles and their functionality and in addition to their, uh, you know, robot and vehicle modes. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about when I get to the robot modes as well, because this is just kind of disappointing to me because I really like Hook. Hook is, I, I really like his personalities that he's just like a snobby Decepticon. He thinks he's the best out of all of them. And his vehicle mode is not. And one last thing that I wanted to do as far as size comparison was concerned, here is the Constructicons with... Earthrise Megatron and Earthrise slash Siege Astro Train. And uh, yeah, they can all fit inside here and they can even merge to form Devastator inside here somehow. Yeah, you know, size sh uh, mass shifting is just a thing. So, you know, Astro Train is going to take off with them all. Now, getting a look at them in robot mode, I gotta say, uh, all of the Constructicons 
again, they look great in robot mode for what they are. There are just some limitations as far as what they decided to do with them. And we'll start off, of course, with Scavenger here. Getting a cl closer look at his uh, actual robot mode, his articulation. He's got this really cool claw that actually kind of goes up and down. And I, and I do like that. It's kind of like an extra thing. Um, I think he's probably the best mold out of all of them. He's got the best articulation for what they did back in 2015. Um, and I do like his robot mode overall. He stands the most stable. And that probably also has to do with the added bit of weight on him. And taking a look at him next to his G1 toy, um, you could see pretty much where they drew the inspiration. Uh, the original scavenger toy, the whole idea was that this part here was what connected into uh, Devastator. And of course, the, the actual um, shovel itself was there in the back. And you can see the differences. This is more based on the animation model. And I do appreciate that. Um, and I, again, I, I really dig this particular one out of pretty much any of the other Constructicons out of this particular set. Getting a look at Scrapper. Uh, this one in particular, I'm a little disappointed. You know, I mean, the other one, you know, I mean, Scavenger in particular, they all have the, you know, the ankle tilt here which is appreciated, has knee bend, but no elbows. Like, what is going on here? They all got their heads on a ball joint, and then part of the transformation has to do with the with the hands. There's no elbows on him. We're talking about a Transformer that is Voyager scaled in 2015, and now it's 2021, and we already know that they've released this toy more than once. They've released, of course, I mean, people have done the upgrade kits, which we really need, you know, so desperately need. And I know it had to do with the balance of Devastator, but I mean, you know, in 2021 to reissue this toy and not give the Takara remold that gave Scrapper his, his proper elbows. I mean, come on. And on top of that, of course, doesn't have any weapons. You know, taking a look at my beat up old G1 uh, scrapper here, his uh, Decepticon symbol is starting to come off and his rub symbol no longer works. But again, you can see where the inspiration is drawn. And in robot mode, he looks great. You know, both toys don't have elbows. Both toys have knees. <laughs> and both toys have a big, giant, honky sho um, shovel hanging on their back. Uh, but, you know, the animation model really drew from this and got a really good looking robot but man do i really want weapons for these guys and i really want elbows on scrapper and here comes the big boy long haul the guy who's got to carry everything and uh you know looking at at long haul i really love what he looks like his biggest drawback i mean he's he's got you know pretty good articulation as far as like you know getting his elbows up and down and all that head on a you know is able to swivel back and forth but, you know, and he's got knees, but this whole assembly right here, whatever they did, and it probably has to do with stability with Devastator, is, man, these, this whole, hear that ratchet, it is tight, and getting that, ah, oh, it's like so, ah, oh, man, I, I, I'm afraid of breaking it. When I first took them out of the packaging, and I'm sitting there trying to move them around, and I'm like, Man, look, it's just like so blasted tight. You can actually hear the, the hinges actually like, um, I, I'm going to have to play with it in order to loosen it in order to actually get him to be a little bit more playable. But he just basically is going to sit there and his arms don't move back and forth, which again, I know that Takara fixed with their version. But taking a look at his G1 counterpart here, um, you could see, of course, where the inspiration is drawn. But this is more based on the animation model. But I do like this big boy quite a bit. It's just he's got too many limitations for his own good. But that comes with his size. Mixmaster looks good. Really good as far as robot mode is concerned. Um, the one thing here is um, this part right here on the original G1 toy was an added part that you had to add in. And was chrome. Um, I have all my weapons like stored away somewhere, so you know my mix master won't have that. But the biggest drawback to him, he's got this big, ugly-looking, you know, 
the cement mixer is down here, whereas on the original toy, it was up on his back. So it wasn't like a cape. It was more like a backpack. Um, and he's got... The, the, where his elbows are, are really weird. And he does have, you know, swivel. Can't turn his hands themselves. Got pretty decent articulation. Um, and I do like this Mixmaster toy. But it's just that one weird thing with the back. And again, taking a closer look at his G1 counterpart, uh, noticing the difference there. And this is what I was talking about, how like the actual cement mixer being on his back kind of played to uh, what he looked like a little bit better. And of course, this is where you would insert the piece that is above his head, you know, and this would actually launch out, you know, whatever you had there, as long as the spring was still working, which... I'm, I'll be honest with you, it's been a while since I've taken my Mixmaster out of the pack, you know, out of the uh, storage, so I haven't been able to test to see if it still works, but taking a look at what they did with this particular Mixmaster, I'm very, very impressed with them trying to, to adhere to the G1 cartoon animation model, at least as far as what he looks like. And now getting a look at Bone Crusher, and this one in particular, I like his robot mode, I think he looks fantastic. Uh, you know, if in that case, I say it is survival of the fittest. That's like one of his, you know, obviously his famous lines. And he's got really good articulation. But my biggest problem with this particular robot mode is his crutch. And it has to do with the connectivity of how this whole, this part right here has to connect. It just doesn't want to. And sometimes his legs, as I'm trying to pose them, will get in the way and it becomes a problem. But he does stand very well. He does have, uh, like I said, a really good articulation for what he is. And compared to his G1 counterpart, I think he is a massive improvement. And I really dug the original Bone Crusher toy. I don't know what it was. The only thing, of course, he had, you know, stability issues with the way that his feet would stand and uh, trying to get, you know, his legs straight. But for some reason, I just liked the way that this particular toy looked, but the robot mode on this is a massive improvement, with the one exception, of course, being the crotch area. And for a 2015 toy that didn't have as much articulation as they've been doing with the War for Cybertron stuff, I think this is a fantastic toy overall, and definitely dig this Bone Crusher otherwise. And then taking a final look here at Hook. And I have to say, I am a big fan of this robot mode overall, except for these weird, look at this, look at these elbows. That is just weird. And I know that Takara fixed it, and I know there's an upgrade kit that I think, to my understanding, that fixed it. But those elbows are just weird, the way that the hands transform. He does have really good articulation, and I actually really dug his transformation because the way that the legs transform, despite, of course, the, you know, typical thing with a lot of hollowness, the way this whole assembly, like, folds in on itself is actually really cool. Most of these I did notice, and I should have, uh, paid, you know, showed this before, is that most of them don't have waist articulation. Again, it's a thing from 2015. And now in 2021, where we've had the War for Cybertron and everything has like full-blown articulation everywhere, you're kind of spoiled a little bit. But these particular Constructicons look fantastic, you know, especially when you're comparing them to their G1 counterparts. And of course, here is G1 Hook and what he looked like. Of course, his hook was what balanced him in particular. And, you know, he had knees as well as having... Uh, you know, arms, which was a plus for a G1 toy, especially in this scale. And one thing to take note of is how, like, these uh, new, you know, these Combiner Wars toys, this particular, you know, set follows the animation model, how well the animation models for the Constructicons matched over to what the Constructicons eventually were. And of course, for a size comparison, I'm going to bring in Earthrise Megatron here, just so you can see what he looks like next to his Constructicons. He stands much shorter, which is a thing from the 2015 toys. They may have not had as much articulation, but they were much larger. Um, whereas this is considered a Voyager class toy, and these were Voyager scale as well. 
And yeah, that is just something that you have to deal with when it comes down to these toys. The other thing to take note of is that with Devastator, the Constructicons themselves don't come with individual blasters. Instead, they come with the parts for Devastator. So I have a small piece of blaster there. This one here, you have the, it's not, it's basically the chest plate. That is as well. And you have individual wings and then the two parts that eventually fold out to the fists. But these can act as missile launchers and you can have the individual Constructicons hold them. And to see what it looks like with all the Constructicons holding them, here are all six Constructicons with the weapons that they are holding. And you can see that at least there is some sort of weapons for them, but not really. Um, I really do wish that they had come with individual blasters, that there was more articulation out of them. And that, you know, you're going to see some th some things with Devastator that I have some issues with as well uh, in the next video. But overall, I am pleased with the Constructicon set. I am very happy that they had reissued it because I had missed it the first time. I was halfway tempted to actually buy the undersized one or even try to spend some more money on the Takara one. But I hope that there is a future for the upgrade kits getting released again or maybe even better upgrade kits since more people now have this version of the Constructicons again. And other than that, I want to know what you guys think. I know I spent some time with this review. I didn't actually do the transformation. But ne with the uh, next review, you're going to see me assemble Devastator. And you're going to see uh, whether or not I dig him or not. And you're going to see the ups and downs with him. So, of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. I have, of course, the Devastator review. And as well as more Transformers discussions, reviews, retrospectives, and anything to do with Transformers coming down the pipeline. So stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, until next time, till all are one. Oh, 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 oh,